Listen, if I had to find out if a student understood nomenclature and I was only allowed to ask them one question, I would ask them to name an acid. Acids are a validation and a celebration of everything else you've learned about chemical nomenclature. But the rules for acids are actually very simple if you know everything else. In fact, I can do it in one breath. A little hyperventilation here to help out. If the anion of the acid does not contain oxygen, all you do is you add the prefix hydro and change the ending to ic acid, as in hydrochloric acid. If your anion does contain oxygen, then all you do is take the suffix of that anion and change it. Eight polyatomics change to ic acids, and eight polyatomics change to us acids. And that's it. Any prefix remains. <sighs> yeah, see, one breath, huh? Yeah, not bad. <laughs> so let's, 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 uh, let's unpack that a little bit. <laughs> Most of the problems students have with naming acids really comes from not understanding the anions themselves. The cation of an acid is always H+, so that makes it very easy. You just have to figure out how many H pluses you need to cancel out the charge of the anion. Something like hydrochloric acid, for instance, has a negative one charge, so you'll need just one hydrogen. But something like sulfate, for instance, has a negative two charge, you'll need two hydrogens. And something like phosphate has a negative three charge, so you'll need three hydrogens. So the cation is pretty much taken care of. In fact, really anything that begins with a hydrogen at this level of chemistry, we can assume is an acid. And to remove any sort of uncertainty, we put AQ after the acid, because really, as Arrhenius defined an acid, an acid is simply anything that releases H plus ions in solution. So if the cation is always hydrogen, then really the only thing left is to figure out your anions. And as I said in the one breath explanation, either your anion contains oxygen or it doesn't. Most of the anions that do not contain oxygen are simply elements off the periodic table. The classic example is hydrochloric acid. And so I always tell students, if you can just remember hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid, you should be able to reverse engineer the rules for acids. So we take the chloride ion and we just say hydrochloric acid, and that's it. Hydrosulfuric acid, hydrofluoric acid, they would all be named the same way. It is very important that you remember that hydro means that there is no oxygen in the acid. Now there are a few polyatomics that do not contain oxygen that would be covered by this rule. Specifically think of cyanide. Cyanide is CN minus, so hydrocyanic acid would be HCN. Most polyatomics contain oxygen. And as long as you understand your polyatomic rules, which again, I have another video on, then it's very easy to name it as an acid. Once you can name your oxygen-containing polyatomic, turning into an acid is a piece of cake. If your polyatomic ends in eight, for example, chlor eight, or even perchlorate, all you do is take away the eight suffix and change it to ic acid. So chlor eight becomes chloric acid, and perchlorate becomes perchloric acid. It's very easy. Now differentiate chloric acid from hydrochloric acid. They sound a lot alike, but they're very different. Again, hydro means it doesn't contain oxygen. Now, if you have one of the less common polyatomics that ends in "-ite", the rules are just as simple. All you're going to do is take away that "-ite suffix and replace it with "-us". So chlorite becomes chlorous acid, and hypochlorite would become hypochlorous acid. Now again, this is a good time to point out the difference between hypo, which means two less oxygens than the stock, and hydro, which means no oxygen. So just be careful about that. That's all the rules to naming acids. I hope that helps. As you can see, I've got a little bit of a beard right now. I am doing a fundraiser at the school for The Caring Place in Pittsburgh. It's an excellent organization where uh, they support families who have lost somebody to cancer. Uh, if you're at all interested in learning about the organization or donating to it, you can go ahead and find more information than doobly-doo below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.